Konnichiwa, this is Dee, and welcome to Watch a Quick. Edamame is actually an immature soybean. It takes about two months to grow edamame and another two months to become daizu soybean. And that extra two months makes a huge difference. Japanese make so many food with daizu, including edamame, soy sauce, soy milk, tofu, miso, natto, koji, yuba, kinako, nimame, zunda, and okara. You can tell how daizu is so vital to Japanese culture. But it's not just versatile, it's also really nutritious. Daizu contains insane amount of protein. It has about 18 grams of protein per 100 gram. In comparison, chicken breast has 23, pork loin has 21, and beef chuck has 17. As you can see, daizu often has as much protein as a general meat does. This is why Japanese call daizu meat of the field. Besides protein, daizu also contains omega-3 fatty acids, dietary fiber, potassium, various vitamins, and minerals. All of this basically means that soybean improves your metabolic activity, digestion, and heart health. Nice. Let's get into the actual food. As I mentioned earlier, daizu transforms into so many different foods. First, edamame. You can eat it as it is, or you can mash it up, mix with salt or sugar to make zunda. It's a popular dish, often eaten with a rice cake mochi in northeastern Japan. Then when edamame becomes daizu, you can turn it into a powder called kinako, a dessert eaten with mochi. Or you can simply boil daizu and eat it as nimame, which is often mixed with salad. Once you turn daizu into soy milk, you can then make tofu and yuba out of it. Yuba is a thin layer of soy protein that floats on top of boiled soy milk. Japanese often eat it with soy sauce like sashimi, or with a soup, or use it as a wrap. The byproduct of soy milk is repurposed as okara, which can be used to make snacks and many other food. That way, it's not wasted. Lastly, let me introduce you to soybean fermentation. With the help of bacteria, you can make fermented soybean base, koji. Koji itself isn't meant to be eaten, but koji is a key ingredient to making soy sauce, miso, and sake. You can also take different bacteria and make natto. Natto is this slimy, seemingly really weird food that's often eaten with rice. It has an aroma and texture that many people, including many Japanese, find it unusual. It definitely is an acquired taste, but it is full of umami and nutrition. And that's the thing, fermentation adds more vitamins and minerals to soybeans. For instance, when compared to regular soy, natto has extra vitamin K, natto kinase, and four times more vitamin B2. Soybeans couldn't have been this nutritious if it wasn't for the fermentation. That was a lot to unpack, but that's how much soybean is involved with Japanese food culture. Japanese took this bean and deeply explored its possibilities. In return, they came up with so many foods that is loved and consumed everywhere in the world. Who knew this little bean has such potential? Well, that was it for the soybean. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.